This story revolves around a group of heroes engaged in their final battle against the Demon King. Max and his companions strive to fight the Demon King with all their might and during severe injuries in the process. Despite being in dire straits defeating the Demon King who still possesses sufficient power and magic to confront the heroes, seems exceedingly challenging. Fred, a healer, feels that their end is near but Max, the leader of the hero squad, convinces them to fight until their last breath. As the Demon King prepares for a final attack to defeat the hero group, Fred instantly casts a protection spell to shield all his comrades from the direct impact of the attack. However, the spell is shattered when directly assaulted by the Demon King. Leo, a knight who serves as the frontline tanker for the hero group, steps forward to halt the next attack by the Demon King. He manages to hold the attack, but it causes him to bleed profusely. Using his remaining strength to restrain the Demon King's movements, Max leaps over Leo, who is still holding the Demon King's arm. Yuria, a mage from the hero group, launches a Thunder Flow spell onto Max's sword, turning it into the ultimate strike to defeat the Demon King. The attack hits the Demon King's head accurately, leading to the Demon King's defeat. However, when Max lands on the ground, he spews blood due to the combined side effects of the attack. Ten years have passed, and the Demon King is reborn as a level one entity with the diminished body. He is welcomed by his assistant, Xania, who has been serving the Demon King since long ago. Confused by the changes in the world since his absence ten years ago, the Demon King relies on Xania, who prepares his favorite clothes, which can only be worn when his body returns to normal. As Xania is accustomed to blending in with humans, she suggests trendy clothing that is currently popular. The Demon King finds Xania's suggestion strange and insists on hearing news about the hero who disappeared after his defeat. Xania tries her best to divert the conversation, not wanting to disclose the hero Max's situation. However, the suspicious Demon King presses Xania to reveal the information. Refusing to comply, Xania attempts to hide the truth, but the Demon King resorts to using his third eye to gather information. After detecting Max's heartbeat, he is delighted to learn that the hero is alive but remains unaware of his current actions. Filled with enthusiasm, the Demon King yearns to meet Max in person. Panicked, Xania tries to dissuade the Demon King from going to meet Max, fearing that he might regret it upon arrival. It's not because Max is meditating or honing his abilities, but because he has changed since their last encounter. Despite Xania's efforts, the Demon King remains adamant and eventually sets off to meet Max. Xania deeply regrets the Demon King's reckless decision to meet Max, the hero, alone. She knows exactly the current state of Max and doesn't want to disappoint the Demon King when he arrives at the apartment. Using his swift flying magic, the Demon King quickly reaches Max's apartment. Upon entering and seeing Max just waking up from sleep, the Demon King becomes confused, thinking he may have entered the wrong house. Shocked by Max's lazy and indifferent behavior after defeating him, the Demon King realizes that the world is now at peace and his assistance is no longer required, even if he were to rise again. However, the Demon King is curious about what has led Max to this state of desolation. While trying to tidy up Max's room, the Demon King discovers a laptop, which he considers an advanced technology of the human race, as it can provide information. When he searches for articles about Max, he is shocked by the negative and demeaning news that has surfaced, tarnishing Max's reputation. Enraged by this, the Demon King confronts Max directly. Max denies all the allegations, stating that it's all lies. However, the Demon King remains skeptical and demands direct proof, fearing that his dreams of fighting Max again could be shattered. The Demon King starts mocking Max, believing what he read on the internet. This angers Max, as he has never done the things mentioned in the articles. The Demon King finds humor in an advertisement featuring Max's drastic transformation. He then asks about the whereabouts of the hero group. Unable to meet after their battle with the Demon King due to societal constraints, Max gives up on that matter. What angers the Demon King further is that Max seems disinterested in dealing with a hero group anymore, choosing to live a secluded life and occasionally attacking with his still unstable powers, as the Demon King has only recently been reborn. 
Max's laziness and lack of enthusiasm for fighting also frustrate the Demon King, who is eventually thrown and lands heavily on his apartment door. Upon waking up and realizing Max's pitiful state, the Demon King feels that Max is no longer a hero and has no desire to fight for justice or anything else. Although Max's combat abilities are still as strong as they were 10 years ago, the newly resurrected Demon King might not be too interested in challenging him. Even if the Demon King were to fully recover, he still wouldn't waste his time fighting Max, as there's no guarantee that he could defeat Max's current companions. Max, while making coffee for the Demon King, explains that the current situation and his reluctance to take on the role of a hero have led him to refuse any involvement, even if compelled by the local government. This domino effect has made Max unwilling to leave the house or meet anyone, even those who believe in him. The Demon King believes that Max will fight him again if he fully rises and brings all his companions to battle, even if it takes a long time. However, Max cannot promise that because his current condition is a result of his actions, whether true or not, as the media has attacked him relentlessly, making him reluctant to appear in public or help those in need, especially against a group of evil humans. Max feels disillusioned with life, lacking the fighting spirit to be a selfless hero who helps anyone in need. He believes that the era of heroes has passed, and someone else should take his place soon. In Max's view, if the Demon King were to create chaos that could destroy the world, there would eventually be a new hero ready to confront the fully resurrected Demon King and usher in a new era of heroes. The Demon King is disappointed with Max's decision but secretly hopes that Max and his companions will be the ones to face him, just like what happened 10 years ago. After witnessing Max's sad state, the Demon King bids farewell and returns to his castle. Surprisingly, later that night, the Demon King returns to Max's apartment with groceries, possibly bought or stolen from a store due to his lack of knowledge about the human monetary system. Thinking that Max might not have had dinner yet, the Demon King decides to cook a hot pot for them to share. Max is baffled by the Demon King's gesture as he never expected such kindness from him. The change in the Demon King's attitude, from being ruthless and terrifying to caring and sympathetic, frightens Max. The Demon King believes that by making a meal for Max, he might rekindle Max's old self, the hero he once knew who never gave up. He thinks that since Max has become a pitiful and isolated person, it's a shame to leave him alone, and perhaps making him a meal will help him revert to his former self. The Demon King realizes that humans have changed during his absence, and he should learn from them to understand the current situation better. The Demon King proposes to stay with Max for a while, but Max initially refuses, fearing the presence of a stranger in his home. However, the Demon King assures him that he will take care of Max. They then have a meal together, and as the Demon King learns to cook, he thinks that before ruling the world, he must first win over Max's heart with his culinary skills. What will happen next? Will Max reunite with his fellow comrades?